Joining us, Congressman Joaquin Castro of Texas, who serves on the House it's Select Committee on Intelligence. Also, here's Ken Vogel, who wrote He's the chief investigative reporter for Politico. Congressman, you're in there, and I guess my question is, we know an awful lot, thanks to the 17 intelligence agencies, about the way Russia wanted, wanted Hillary to lose, and if he could be really lucky, get Trump to win, how they wanted to undermine our democracy. That's all on the record. We also have a lot of other things on the record, how Trump romanced or bromanced the Russians all through the campaign, said wonderful things about their little instrument called WikiLeaks, said wonderful things about uh, Vladimir Putin, about everything over there, and how he's going to be their allies in the world against ISIS, et cetera, et cetera. It seems to me a lot of the information's out there about that symbiotic relationship between Trump and the Russians. What do you know more, or can you hint at, where you think this story's going? Well, you know, Chris, I've said very clearly, as have others on this committee, that we need to get to the bottom of one question. Did any Americans conspire with the Russians who interfered with our 2016 presidential election? And specifically, did anyone associated with the Trump campaign uh, help those who interfered with the 2016, 2016 presidential election. And we keep seeing more and more connections between Trump advisors, at least that are coming out in reports, these Trump advisors and the Russians. And so, of course, uh, this just speaks to how important the investigation is. Well, doesn't the, um, I mean, my experience over the years is the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence effort in this country, which all other countries have, they have all kinds of electronic wiretaps and information, electronic information on all communication involving certainly the Russian ambassador and certainly any other Russian officials that look like they might be undercover. Um, why don't we just get that information now? Why do we have to sit around and wait for it? When's it going to come, all that information? It's there. It's in the NSA's got it. They, the CIA's got it. Certainly the FBI. What's the wait for? Uh, well, that's a great question. You know, I've been critical of the pace of the investigation, at least in the House Committee. Uh, I said last week that there is a gap between what uh, the intelligence agencies know and what the committee has been told. Adam Schiff, the Democratic ranking member, uh, has essentially said the same thing. Uh, so I'm with you on that. I think we should be moving at a brisker pace. Uh, you see that there's a few hearings on this issue that have now been scheduled uh, and publicly announced. And so hopefully we're going to start moving at a quicker pace because all Americans deserve an answer to these questions. Uh, and getting to the bottom of it really uh, is fundamental to our democracy. Well, we know now that Russia did what they did to help Trump get elected, of course. We also know that as a candidate, Trump repeatedly made overtures to Putin. Let's watch him. I think I'd get very, along very well with Vladimir Putin. I just think so. Wouldn't it be nice if actually we could get along with Russia? And what's wrong if Russia wants to drop million-dollar bombs on ISIS? I say, good. Putin said Donald Trump is a genius. He's going to be the next great leader of the United States. My attitude, when people like me, I like them. Even Putin. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We've got a lot of killers. Why, you think our country's so innocent? Well, let me go to a couple of things that do matter here. Uh, certainly our policy towards uh, Ukraine, our policy towards Crimea. Um, I think either administration, Democrat or Republican, Obama, or normally a Republican administration would say, Russia, big bear, hold back. Don't be grabbing back those countries on your border so easily. You got back Crimea. We'll fight about that. But certainly don't make any moves on the larger part of, uh, of uh, Ukraine. And now we get the sense that the, the platform in the Republican co uh, convention this year, the plank dealing with that, was changed. And look at this. During the same week that Trump aides spoke with the Russian ambassador in Cleveland during the Republican convention, the Trump campaign watered down an amendment to the party platform that supported Ukraine against Russian aggression. Trump's Chairman uh, Je Paul Manafort at the time denied responsibility for the change, as did Trump himself. But Trump also defended Russia's right, Russia's right to seize Crimea from Ukraine. Here he is. As everybody on the platform committee has said it came from the Trump campaign. If not you, it, who? It, no, it absolutely did not come from the Trump from the campaign. So nobody, nobody the from the Trump committee. campaign wanted that change in the platform? No, no one. Zero. Why did you soften the GOP platform on Ukraine? Uh, I wasn't involved in that. You know, the people of Crimea, from what I've heard, would rather be with Russia than where they were. 
Well, now Politico is reporting that a Ukrainian operative with suspected ties to Russian intelligence consulted with Paul Manafort during the campaign and told political operatives in Ukraine that he played a role in changing that platform language. So, uh, Ken, what do we make of this? I mean, if they soften up the, uh, the Republican platform, it's usually the more hawkish party, uh, soften them up because they got inside operatives in the Republican operation here. We got to know about that. Well, they're quick to say that, in fact, the language in the platform ended up being tougher than it was before this amendment was proposed. It wasn't as tough as this well, amendment. Well, not thanks to them. Right. Well, well certainly. And, and we have reporting that does suggest that, in fact, there were representatives of the Trump campaign who did play a role in watering down that proposed amendment that would have been much tougher. So it's yet another example where they come out with a blanket denial. They say, we didn't have anything to do with the platform. Turns out they did. We didn't, you know, uh, uh, Flynn says to the vice president of all people. I didn't talk about the sanctions with the Russian ambassador. Turns out he did. Sessions tells the Judiciary Committee, I didn't yeah. talk with any Russians. Turns out he did. The biggest problem for me is that they just cannot get their story straight here. If it comes out, Congressman, that, uh, and you might be one of the first to know it in the Intelligence Committee, that there was a, a positive role by the Trump people in getting the Russians to do what they did in terms of screwing up the Democrats in the general election with all the uh, hacking and everything. Not that they played a role in that. Would that be impeachable? Uh, if at the end of the investigation it's found that the president's advisors played a role in aiding the Russians who interfered with the election and that the president knew about it, then that is historically significant and it's a betrayal of our democracy. And certainly I think many people would move for impeachment. Thank you so much. U.S. Congressman Watson.